Hi everyone, students and parents. It's time for our weekly OT session. Um, this week we have a food theme for all of our activities, with the exception of, Simon says, that's not really a food theme. Um, you can use this worksheet to play a Simon Says game with your child. Something to keep in mind is that the activities on this page where your child is doing more movement, especially where their head is moving around, such as spinning or jumping up and down, those types of head movements are excitatory. So think about being on a roller coaster. Your head's going forward, backward, side to side. It kind of wakes your body up. Um, activities where you are using your muscles in a more stable, still fashion, such as things like um, doing a plank, a lot of yoga poses, balancing on one foot, those deep, heavy pressure exercises are going to be more calming. So if you're doing Simon Says to get some movement in before sitting down at the table, if you do some of the more active, hop on one foot, um, spin around in a circle, try to follow it up with something a little bit more stable, like um, show off the muscles in your arms. So just that still, heavy pressure is going to be more calming than the movement-based activities. I'm also going to um, send with this, ooh, I'll put it in the comments or the description as well. I'm gonna put some links for some Go Noodle activities um, that are food-based. So Go Bananas and then um, Peanut Butter in a Cup, some different movement activities that you can use either before you do your OT or throughout the day. The First thing that we've got in our OT binder for this week is a maze activity. This is a pretty easy maze. The path is very big and simple, but I'm gonna challenge you to pick three things to collect from the grocery store. So if you wanna choose to pick up all of the items at the grocery store, that's fine. You just might have a lot of lines on your paper, um, but don't just try to get to the cash register. Try to get some things along the way. The next maze that is in your binder is actually much trickier, and I did something different with my maze. So because there are so many different choices for pathways on this maze, I thought that I would kind of grade it to make it a little bit easier. So I put different colored paths, and then I put the directions of how to make it to the end on the bottom. So you could do this before your child starts the maze and then see if they can follow the directions. Start on the orange path and then, hmm, I'm at the end of the orange path. Should I go on the red path or the blue path? Let me check my directions. Done with orange. Oh, it says red path is next. So then I would follow the red path until I get to the end of the red path. Should I go to the green path or the blue path? Let me check my directions. So you can do that color coding as a way to help your child get through the maze. Um, the shorter sections are gonna be more challenging because they'll have to make more changes in direction. If you do a big section, like this blue section is pretty long, and then the red section is very long. The longer your sections, the easier it's going to be. So you could just do two sections to get all the way through, and then a couple of sections that your child has to avoid. It's up to you how hard or how easy you wanna make it. If your child likes the challenge, they can go ahead and go all the way through the maze themselves and then ask for help if they need it. Next is a cookie monster activity. So I'll go through one of these with you just so you can see how it's done. Like we do with a lot of our hidden picture activities, I'm gonna choose one color for each of these pictures and then switch for the next picture so I don't get confused whenever I'm counting. So I'm gonna look down here and I'm gonna say, this looks like, to me it looks like a pizza, but I think it's a, a sugar cookie with icing and sprinkles. So whenever I find those, I'm gonna color them black. So here I go, trying to use my strategy, start at the top and then look over. Go down, no, none there. This is a lot easier than some of the um, hidden pictures that we've done in the past. 
but this one has a graphing component. So after you find the cookies in the top, count them one, two, three, four, and then you're gonna fill in that many boxes at the bottom. One, two, three, four. Then you can switch to a different color to find the rest of these, and then it will ask you some questions. Which did he eat the most of? Which did he eat the least of? And you can color that in for your answer. The last worksheet is one of our cutting and sorting activities. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight the big straight line. Last week I did green. The color that you do doesn't really matter. It's just a way to draw your child's attention to that big straight line and help them remember where they are going to cut. So I'm going to highlight the big straight lines and that will be the first thing that I cut. So just like that. And remember, you're gonna put your thumbs up when you cut, thumbs up on your paper, thumbs up on your scissors, and then you're gonna point your scissors away from your body. I'm gonna cut the line closest to the edge of the paper first so that I don't lose my grip. Cutting away from my body, thumbs up. And once I have these straight lines cut, then it will just be a little snip to separate the pictures. So I'm going to hold thumbs up, cut away from my body, snip, snip, move my fingers over. And then once you get all of that cut out, you can sort the fruits, the vegetables, and the treats. When I know I said the last thing in our binder, but I forgot, this is the week that we get to do our felt food activity that was in the front of your binder. Um, whenever I do art or craft activities at school, I like to do really simplified kids' directions so that if um, my students lose track of what the next step is. They can always look to reference to see what they need to do next. Your kit does come with some directions on the back. They miss some steps in my opinion. <laughs> so it does um, give a good idea of what you're supposed to do, but I broke it down a little bit further. So just a general basic drawing of, we're gonna take all the little pieces and put them on to the, the big piece. You guys might have, um, I think there was cupcakes and donuts and ice cream and pizza as well. So whenever you're doing your directions, just make it specific to what your child will need to do based on the kit that you got. Um, it's all generally the same. The stickers go on, you sew all the way around except for one area where you crumple up paper and stick it into the hole, and then you sew the hole to finish it. Um, I don't expect that your child will be able to even use these directions and do it all by themselves. They're gonna need a little bit of help to walk them through step by step. There are a lot of pieces that come with this, and then things like threading the needle and then tying the knots, those are gonna be difficult. So just um, walk them along through the different steps and then try to work with them and say, hey, what do you think it is that we need to do next? And then give them a cue to reference their directions that you've written out. So I hope you guys all enjoy this activity. It's a good one because then at the end you get something nice to show for it. So have fun with this. Um, we will be doing live OT sessions on Tuesdays at one o'clock for Lale's class. So keep an eye out for that link if you'd like to join a live OT session if you are in Lale's class. Thank you.